And the Lord speaks to me clearly and said, the man across the table, he's going to be called to lead Times Square Church in a season of crisis. Hi, I'm Carter Conlon, and today we're here, and I thought you should know how Tim Delina became the senior pastor of Times Square Church. It's such a privilege and a pleasure to have this man of God as my friend, and not only a successor, but my friend. He is the, the third pastor, only the third pastor, in Times Square Church in 33 years. And you're going to hear today how he has been divinely appointed by God for this leadership role, and it has made my heart really glad. Tim, it's just so good to have you here today and to be able to talk together. Carter, what a joy to be here and not only work together, but actually, like you said, that we can call each other friends. Yeah, and and, and your story begins in 1958. Now, you didn't begin till farther, <laughs> till farther down the line than 1958, but your story actually begins in 1958. So let's start there. And uh, tell the people how that happened. Well, it's amazing what God what God does when you go all the way back. When I think of my grandparents coming from Italy and from Russia, one, um, one group comes over as Catholics, the others come over as, as Orthodox. And when they get here, through a number of events, they end up in the Russian Pentecostal Church and the Italian Pentecostal Church. And so a family that should be either Orthodox or Catholic ends up being a spirit-filled family. And thus my parents come come in and my, my, my mother, who's in New York City at the Russian Pentecostal Church, my dad at the Italian Pentecostal Church, meet, get married, and then all of a sudden start to raise a family in the church, a church right, right next to Madison Square Garden called Glad Tidings Tabernacle. And so they're literally in a place that in, in that time was one of the number one mission churches in the world. And my parents would tell me the stories of seeing from Smith Wigglesworth come in and healing crusades. And they knew him. They saw him come in and people would wheel in the metal uh, hospital beds. Um, and that was their, that was the heritage. So mir just miracles. Let's, let's believe for that again today. Amen. I mean, why wouldn't we believe for that That's again right. today? We should. We should believe for that. And yeah. so I think to myself, this is the heritage. And so my dad then goes into, as all of my Italian uncles go into the fire department and the police department. And who would have thought that God would just take somebody, the son of an immigrant who becomes a Christian, and yet he wants to be a Christian in the secular workplace. He wants to just show Christ's yeah. character. Yeah. And who would have thought that we would be connected by my dad intersecting in, on a Brooklyn street corner all the way back in 1957. Oh, 57. So that's David Wilkerson had just come into New York yes. City, and a lot of folks know his story. He's, yes. he's the founding pastor of Times Square Church. So David Wilkerson came in to preach. He stood up on a street corner. That's it. And he was told by a passing officer that that's right. you can't speak here. Nikki Cruz was in that crowd, as well as some other gang members. That's right. And it was your father, a police captain, who just over outranked this other officer, and he said... He said, let the man speak. When, when it was about to be shut down, this is their first encounter, as it's about to be shut down, gangs are listening, um, and, and really haven't even heard the message yet. My dad says, let the man speak. David starts to speak there, and it's the first time Nikki is presented with the gospel. But you see, I love that because a lot of people in ministry think that they've got to be, ministry is some big thing. They don't, they don't see ministry as being in the place that God would have you at the very time that he would have you there. I mean, you think about if your dad had not been there, and secondarily, maybe if he had not spoken up, David Wilkerson wouldn't have preached. Nikki Cruz wouldn't have heard the gospel. Nikki has preached to probably 30 to 50 million people throughout the world. Many, many million have come to, come to Christ through him. David Wilkerson's ministry went worldwide. Countless numbers of people have been set free from drugs and addiction and launched into the ministry. And all of that began when one man decides to stand up and preach on a street corner and another man says, let the man speak. And, and I think, Carter, you're absolutely right. And what people forget is the other characters in God's script because many times they only see what the main character has done. They'll see the Nikki Cruz or the David Wilkerson's but forget whether it's a police officer that says let the man let the man speak or whether it's a a a christian who witnesses to my dad's parents when they come over on the boat every person wow. played part of that wow. Wow. i mean carter think about it like this when you when a, a sunday school takes place in chicago a bunch of kids are in this class 
and one incorrigible kid that just that just wouldn't respond. So the Sunday school teacher, a volunteer who plays a cast player, comes down and decides to go to the kid's place of employment, which is a shoe store. Goes downtown mm -hmm. Chicago, mm -hmm. waits for the kid, wondering what is it going to look like, and menace and and witnesses to Dwight at the at the books at the shoe store, who becomes a Christian, who we know him as not Dwight but D.L. Moody. Yes, and then D.L. Moody begins to witness to all different people from Wilbur Chapman gets saved under him, then a baseball player named Billy Sunday yes. gets saved, yes. and Billy Sunday preaches in a tent in North Carolina, and a Billy Graham comes out of it, all starting. Where, where David Wilkerson starts with a cop, D.L. Moody starts with a Sunday school teacher volunteer while he's ministering at a shoe store. Uh, it's just absolutely phenomenal. And, and I think, you know, when we talk about your dad, because that's where we're starting, is that, like, he, he was in the right place at the right time, took his stand, in a sense, for Christ. Really, it was a stand that he took. You know, he, I mean, as a cop, you're, you're, you're throwing your, your lot in with whatever's going to happen after that. He had, had, I suppose he had a witness of the Spirit that this was a God moment. And not only did he do that, but he raised a godly son, <laughs> which you are. And not knowing that his stand and what God had called him to do was going to make you the senior pastor of that which was going to be founded through the life of the man that was now preaching to a street on a street corner to a gang. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. This has to be God that does this. You can't. And you're absolutely right, Carter. I think to myself, growing up, as much as we used to kid about it, but we there was no options of of not going to church. My dad led the way. He was chief of the transit uh, department. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, the New York City Transit was separated from the NYPD. So my dad was one of the chiefs. He was chief of the subway and the bus policemen in, in New York City. Oh, yeah. On call 24 hours a day. In fact, he walked around, Carter, with a little thing we never even seen. <laughs> it was like... We, we're going, what is that little box he'd wear on his belt? And at that time, it was called a beeper. And we thought that was like... I remember those. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, be careful, though, because I remember it. <laughs> That's right. We're going, this is technology. <laughs> but that thing would go off all the time. It would go off while he was leading hymns in the church. But that, But he showed the example of being a working man, serving in the church, having his family in the church, Every Sunday night, we'd have to go there because there would be altar calls on Sunday night. People would pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, and we were always in the house of God, never knowing that God was, was doing something in my own heart. And we got to get back there again. We got to get back to praying for yes. the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We've gotten way too technical, That's way right. too smart, <laughs> even for God. And we're in a, in a situation in our world today where the simplicity of the gospel has got to come back again. You know where your dad was a real character. I mean, I, I, I got to know Tim's dad. Uh, I got to know your dad uh, for a little while. And uh, I remember being in a restaurant one time and uh, he stood up in the middle of the restaurant and he said, folks, if, if any of you here are not aware of it, this is Pastor Carter Conlon, the senior pastor of Times Square Church. And then another time in the same restaurant, might I add, I started eating my chicken salad, and he stands up and says, did you pray over that food before you started to eat it? He said, I never saw you pray. And, of course, there's like 50 other people in the restaurant. He was a total, utter character. I, I loved happened it. to be there at that <laughs> restaurant and thought, there's no way I'll be back at Times Square Church ever again the rest of my life. <laughs> I loved your dad. I mean, he was he was a character. He was real. He was real. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to build a library eventually here at, at our Bible school. And it's going to be called the Paul Delina Memorial Library. And I, I want there to be a cornerstone. And on the cornerstone of that building, it's going to say, let the man speak. Amen. And you've given 17,000 books to this library already, which are in storage. And we just want to thank you for that. It's just absolutely phenomenal. Well, it's a joy for me. And Carter, this was your, yours and Teresa's idea that you've had this, this thought. And I remember you calling me up. And it, was, it, it so not only bore witness, it so moved me. Because it, it literally, who would have thought that God, I, I, didn't read a, I didn't read a book until I was a junior in high school. And it was only because I had, went to a, a reading class. The athletes went to a class that was an easy A. Yeah. And, and then when I read a book for the first time, because I just kind of made my way through high school for the first time, it was Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis, because it just interested me. And who would have thought, fast forward, 17, and we're approaching now 20,000 books later, that, that it would have the opportunity to invest as Teresa is leading Summit International School of the Ministry to invest in that next generation as she is, that who would have thought my dad saying, let the man speak, would turn into 20,000 books 
that we're going to we're going to have the opportunity to help students to let them speak one day. Yeah, well, and also too, like it, it's only appropriate I think to honor your dad because without him there would be no Summit International School of Ministry. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be here. It all came from that moment, and I just love that. I love that, and I love the fact that. You know, I, I wasn't born when David, I was born in, uh, nine, well, I actually, I was. I was born in <laughs> 53, but when you get old, you forget. Okay, I was four years old when David Wilkerson did this, all right? I, I mentioned that one time in a sermon I was preaching. I said, I turned, I said, you know, Brother Dave, I was riding a tricycle when all this happened with Nikki Cruz, and he, he yelled out across the platform, thanks a lot, buddy, <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of a mess. It just dawned on me. But you weren't born yet, mm -mm. but you were in the mind of God. You were in the DNA of your father, and God foreknew, God foreknew that you would pastor the church that would be f founded by David Wilkerson at the very crossroads of the world. Times Square is considered the very center of the world. Whatever happens there can affect the whole world, and God foreknew it. That's what I love about the ways of God, and, and if we are willing to be led by the Spirit, I think that's where miracles start happening. It, it's when... It's when it's when people get involved and somehow think we know better than God does, or we have an idea about how we can promote God's kingdom, and we end up looking for resumes, and we're not looking for the leading of God anymore, and we end up putting people in places they don't belong, and it, it leaves them dry. There's no real calling. There's no real anointing, but you were foreordained by God, so you went through all these years of college and all the years of pastoring in Detroit and, the, and all of the experiences, and then we ended up... Uh, about 10 years, 11 years ago now in, uh, in Gallagher's in New York City because I was welcoming you. It was a very real moment, and it's a, very, it's a moment led by the Spirit of God. I, and I think it's just as important, Carter, to think of that moment, but you can't take away how God would lead Brother Dave to New York, how God brought you to New York, and then you add another supernatural moment that... I remember uh, Kate would say to us, she goes, this is a 33, 34-year-old church with three senior pastors, but each of them had a miracle moment that God began to speak to us to be here. But so while we were in that restaurant, I was here for one week. And while I was sitting in that restaurant, we're, we're eating across the table from each other. This is very eerie right now because I feel almost like... Almost the same distance. Almost right? the same distance. Uh, in a corner where they, uh, the kitchen door kept opening. And if you, do, if you, if you lean too much to the left, it would hit you in the side of the That's head. That's right. It was the worst seat in the restaurant. Because it was packed. Yeah. And yeah. as we're eating, the food has mm -hmm. come, you get this dazed look in your eyes. Uh, glazed. Let's call it glazed. Okay, let's call okay. it glazed. I like that. I like that one better. I apologize. <laughs> Day, dazed is 7 o'clock in the morning. That's right. Okay. That's right. <laughs> and you look at me, and you said to me, you go, I believe I have a word from the Lord from you. I, 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 Tim, I have a, a prophetic word. And Carter, I don't think you've ever done that to me before. I, no. I think it was the first time no. you've ever done that to me. No. And and do you remember do you remember what you said to me? You started just sharing your heart about coming to the city and some of the things you felt God speaking to you. When suddenly it's like you disappeared, but that's happening. That happens to me from time to time throughout my life. It's it's a it's a word of knowledge. It's a, it's a prophetic moment, and and suddenly you're you're speaking, but I'm not hearing you anymore. And the Lord speaks to me clearly and said, "The man across the table, he's going to be called to lead Times Square Church in a season of crisis." It was that clear. So I looked at you across the table. And I said, I have a word for you, and it comes in two parts, but I can only tell you part A. That's right. That's exactly what The Lord what said you to hold back the second part. And I didn't tell you the second part for, what, six years or seven years. It must have been at least six years. At right? le I think it was even longer than that. I think it was yeah. eight years. Yeah. So I said, I said to Pastor Tim, I said, I don't want to rain on your parade, but I have a word for you from the Lord. I said, the next two years are going to be the hardest two years of your life. And I said, there's a reason God is doing this, but I can't tell you the reason. And you're going to have to trust this word because when you go through the storm, you have to understand there's a reason deeper than what you're going to go through. That's exactly what you said. And and it's not what a normal person wants to hear when you're at a restaurant. Well, you actually friends. said, thanks a lot. I, did. I wasn't going to say that, but that's exactly <laughs> what I said. And and the honest truth was this. It, it, it mm -hmm. I was so excited to be there. I didn't even I didn't even take it to heart because it just I was just happy it was great to be here and everything was going great and many times Carter you would tell me when I was going through difficult moments I'm going I, I'm I'm dying I'm dying here you got to help and you just go 
just hang on. There's a good part coming to this. And it's not what I wanted to hear because it was so, because it was difficult, but to look back on it, you do, you do see the deepening. Well, I know. And every time you'd call me and I'd say, I'd say, Tim, you, you got to hold on because there's, there's another side to this story that I can't tell you yet. One day on a Sunday night, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a, a, Sunday was always evangelistic. The place is packed. It's during a worship time. The, I mean, the people are leaping up and down. It's just one of those high points in the church. I was walking to the back just to see, just to see what's going on in the lobby during the service because I, I no longer spoke on Sunday night. And it, as I walked down the aisle, the Lord spoke to me and said, this next season is not you are not the one that's called to lead the church in this next season. I have something for you. God, it's not like I was done or he's wiping me off the map, but you are not the one that I've called to lead this church in this next season. So I remember we started talking and, you know, a lot of people don't know it, but the, the day, the week you came, COVID hit, the church shut down and, uh, and the Lord just had been telling me, Carter, the future of the church, the future of Times Square Church is going to be on the internet. I, I had been sharing it with the staff for almost two years. So I, I saw a, a season coming where we were not, we're not going to be able to meet. And I started telling our leaders this. We're not going to be able to meet. The future of the church is going to be on the Internet. And I started sharing with them through John chapter 21, the story of the disciples fishing all night. And then Jesus appears on the shore after a long night and says, cast the net on the right side of the boat. In other words, do some, do it differently. They had been obviously casting it on the left side almost all night. No, it never even occurred to them to try another side. But he said, cast the net on the right side. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Carter, it's Times Square Church is going to cast the internet on the right side of the boat. And there's going to be a harvest that's going to stagger you. And, and this is what I began to tell the leadership. But God knew that you were the man that was going to be called in to cast the net on the right side of the boat. And I can't tell you how happy I am about that. I, I mean, my heart is just glad beyond words. I mean, just, uh, I, I, it, it's wonderful to be in the leading of the Spirit of God. Amen. That's the key. It's not so much that, you know, it, because it ultimately it doesn't matter what we think. That's right. There's no power if we're not following the leading of the Spirit. But right. God has orchestrated this. And, 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 the, it's, and you're my friend, which is great. You know, it's, it'd be one thing if we we're just kind of, co-workers, but we're, right. we're, we're way beyond that. At least I think so. <laughs> I, mean, I don't are. know what you think. But not, yeah, yeah, I can just, we I always are. tell him, even when this phone rings and it's me, it's, oh, <laughs> Lord, what am I going to do? That you does know? not happen. Yeah, yeah, Lord. You know, and by God's grace, I think we'll stay friends for the rest of our rest journey. Of our life. You know, and it's just something I know in my heart. And it's not based on ministry. I just love you because you're a man of God and you're a friend, you know, and you have been for years and years and years. And what a privilege, what a privilege to put the net in the hands of a man you trust. Amen. Carter, you, you, have, you have been such a good friend, even, even beyond these new roles and relationship that we have as the Times Square Church overseer and the senior pastor. Um, and I know we've even talked about at some point in the future, we want to talk about that even for future churches and future pastors that may have to deal with succession. But I but I have to tell you, I remember when we set the date, you came to me and go, this is, I feel like this is the date. And we said May 4th. And there was no COVID, there was no Wuhan, there was no, <laughs> yeah. there was none of that. Mm -hmm. And and then when we announced it in February, you and we and we felt let's announce it um simultaneously in Louisiana and in and in Times Square Church. And this is February. And then who would have thought that literally a month later, the entire planet was going to about to shut down yep. and life like we like life that as we've never known, it was going to about to take place. And I remember you telling me that you said to me, you said, Tim, listen, why don't you it, don't come up? We're not, we're not meeting right now. We had to shut down the church. Why don't you come up when we can open up again? And and I knew at that point what God, what God put in my heart and called me to do. And I just said, no, 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 I have to put on a battle uniform. Yep. I have to be there on that day. And I love that, you know, because if you don't have that soldier's mentality, yes. then you will, you will cower and cave and run. 
when trouble comes. But and you, that, you won't do that because you're not that kind of a man. Well, and that's what I, that, all I thought about was I can imagine coming in when, well, everybody else has bloody uniforms and I come in with the white, <laughs> white uniform yeah, going yeah, like, exactly. I'm here. I'm here, yeah, let the bells ring <laughs> out, the banners fly. <laughs> that's right. But it was, but it was amazing because what you not only saw in my life and for Times Square Church, you also saw for what was to happen in the church, which was casting the internet. And I knew that this is the, that that as you were handing it over to me, you were you were saying, okay, this is the right side. This is now let's go into action. And that has been amazing because the fact of the matter is, from the day I landed, there is the church doors have not been open. And thank God we're getting so close now with all the restrictions being lifted. Yes. But but there has been nothing. Not a, but but what it has done is we have in a sense sowed and gotten that net together through the internet that we are seeing now a harvest coming in that we're calling digital Christians that have never walked through the doors of the church. It's been through a screen. Um, never got baptized in the tank on the stage of Times Square yep. Church, but it was in an alley or a river online as people watched. Um, they have never gone through the New Believers class in the annex. They've done it digitally through our essentials class online. Like everything has changed, but the message hasn't but the method has. Oh, totally. And and uh, I see the last day's uh, spiritual awakening, or I call it a mercy moment, and is, is going to be in home. So the church is going to finish, in my opinion, the way she began. Yes. It's, it, it, they went from house to house, breaking bread, praying together, uh, studying doctrine, and and they were in homes. They were in people's homes. And, and th it was that church, in a sense, that changed the whole known world. And then eventually we kind of morphed into buildings and kind of almost like uh, more of a co corporate structure, in a sense, in America. But those days, I think, are coming to an end. Well, and we're, what, we're going back to where we began. What makes this so important, Carter? When, when I think about from the Gallagher's to what you saw in the sanctuary to what you were even preaching to the staff before even none, any of this was ever seen of casting an internet that nobody really understood what you were saying. Yeah. That is the last day's church. And this is why your role, both as friend, but also as ministry partner is so vital because Peter pr says this on the day of Pentecost. He says, in the last days, old men will dream dreams, young men will see visions that I believe today that that's what the church is going to look like. Your sons and daughters are going to prophesy and yes, preach. Yes, And I believe God has a role for the young, the sons and daughters, for the women in the church, but also putting together old and young leaders together. Because most of the churches have morphed into this is just young people at this church, or this is old yes, people at yes, this church. Right. But he says when the, as the, as the Spirit's poured out, the Spirit is poured out on that last day's, old men will dream dreams young men will see visions and i believe if it's spirit if it's mm -hmm. spirit filled mm -hmm. the dreams are going to be i see the internet i see it going back to the houses i see that's what brother dave seeing fires and and a calamity coming to new york the young men the young visionaries like myself we need to hear those dreams and to and to separate the enemy is separated in the church because here's what's happened carter if you have church with old people but no spirit-filled old people, then the dreamers dream of the of the old days. Yes. Not the last yes. days, but the old days. Yes. And if you have young men that is not spirit-filled in the church, then you have young men having visions not on how to implement the dreams, but on how to be famous yes. and known. Yes. But God, I'm so grateful for you that your heart to dream of what's to take place. I, my job is then to take that dream and just put the plan to it. You, you dreamed internet, I put the plan in place. That's why, what a joy. And then God raises up, like through Summit and, and Teresa, then God raises up the sons and daughters to prophesy. And the, I think the beautiful thing about we're just starting to understand, because this church was birthed in the Spirit. The ministries of it were birthed in the Spirit. And I think God's starting to give us an understanding about how they are the heart and lungs, in a sense, of what God is doing through Times Square Church. So we, from the Bible school to the prayer meetings to the uh, to the, the connect groups, to every, it's all working together. That's right. Everything works together for one intended purpose that God had. We're not just all these disjointed ministries kind of trying to get along, but it's actually one body, one unit moving in one direction. That's right. An interesting note, years ago, you know, David Wilkerson, one of the things he was known for is he said he saw a thousand fires burning in New York City. And I turned to him on the platform, I'll never forget it one day, and I said, Brother Dave, do you suppose that the thousand fires you saw might be 
uh, home fellowships where the, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit has come. And he looked at me and he went, hmm. <laughs> Which, okay, is an interesting response. But we know that a hmm from Brother Dave yeah, exactly. could be a very affirmative uh, thing. hmm <laughs> is like, wow, maybe that's what I saw. Yeah. Yes, I think he saw turmoil. Nobody, nobody doubts that. But is it possible? That, that homes had come alive, that the Holy Spirit had invaded apartments and homes, and not just New York City, but all over the world. That's why I'm excited about this day. And that's why I'm uh, at the end of every prayer meeting now, I'm, in, I'm asking people to stay and pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's get back to where the church began. It was that church, Acts chapter 2, that caused 3,000 people to bend their knee to God. I mean, let's, if it works, don't try to fix it. That's like, right. just go back to it. You know, I, I have this saying that I say quite often here at the Bible school. Yeah, when all else fails, read the instructions. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> well, you know, it is such a, uh, a privilege to walk with you, Tim. It's just such a privilege. And, and thank you for letting me lead the prayer meeting on Tuesday night. That's been very gracious of you. And uh, it's such as a privilege to just to reach out to the, the, the marginalized, the disaffected, the addicted, the, the people who think that God's never going to use them or doesn't love them. That, that's my role now. I feel like I'm called to reach out to these people as well as call the nation to pray, but particularly to reach these people and just say, God loves you. Well, Carter, my, it's my joy. I, I, you're so gracious, but let me just say, I feel it is, if I can put myself in the place, don't don't be angry with me. I'll be the young man, the visionary, and if you could be the old man dreamer. <laughs> but I would be foolish because I think there's a number of things happening. This mm -hmm. is the church gets to hear the dreamer. The church on, gets to hear the, the visionary preach. But the joy for me is also that we are teaching our church to have the prayer meeting online from our school is now teaching our, our our people and people around the world that this is just as much of the prayer meeting, whether we're in the building or it's online, we can still pray. Yes. And we're teaching them th because I believe that's what's coming. I think, I think Carter, what you saw on the internet and, and what's happening at the school, you leading our prayer meeting, lead, encouraging homes to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and us having the vision to believe in the years to come that we're going to raise up 10,000 connect groups globally. Oh, I think it's going to be more than that. I, and you and you told me that, and mm -hmm. I just shook my head again like Gallagher's because you mm -hmm. said, Tim, don't hit the arrow on the ground. You better hit it enough <laughs> hit times. It a lot of was, times. And that's when I hit yeah. my head going, oh, no. <laughs> but it was, but I, I know you are absolutely right. It, the pandemic isn't, isn't the the crisis. I don't, I don't really believe that's the crisis time coming. I think that was, that was the, the prerequisite. That was the preparation. When God shut the church down and churches, it wasn't simply to shut us down as a disruption. I believe it was directional. Mm -hmm. I believe God was going, I want you to, you're, I'm going to give you a season to get the digital part of the church together because there is coming a time that I'm going to shut it down for good. Yep. And it's going to go back to the homes that anybody today, and Carter, you see this, and from the places you've preached and the and from the the politicians that, that are on the inside, Christian men and women, that if we preach the gospel today, you know this very well, it's going to be considered hate speech. Don't yes. you believe that? Well, it's already there. It, it, it's not coming. It's arrived. Right. I, I think just a lot of society is not aware of it yet. A lot of the Christian world are not aware of it yet. But we, we are in a crisis moment. That's right. And uh, But I... But God, right? But we always say, you know, you, you still have a Gideon, you still have an Esther, you Amen. still have a, you still have 120 failures right. in an upper room. <laughs> you know, let's just go back to where it began That's right. and just say, God, give us your Holy Spirit. God, give us your power. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to come. This has been my, my constant prayer now. I, I pray it every day. I pray it in the gym. Lord, you have to come. That's right. You have to, you have to vindicate your name. You have to glorify your own name. You've got to, we can't bring conviction into people's hearts of sin. Only you can. So... God, forgive us for trying to do this without you. Forgive us for all of our, our corporate strategies and methodologies and all of the other stuff that has left our nation bankrupt. Lord, we just need you to come. And, and he said, you know, to Jerusalem, he said, you won't see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And it, it, the word blessed, I love it. It means that we become indwelt and fully satisfied Amen. in God. Like we want, not just need you, Lord, we want you. Yes. We want you. We want you to come and, and kind of push us all down a little bit so that our names are not, you know, we're not looking to be, uh, you know, elevated. It's just, just 
come and be glorified, Jesus. Right. I mean, that's the way I feel. Well, that's, that's what I believe is going to happen in that last day's church. Because when you think about even, let's, let's take the place on the planet where, in a sense, the greatest revival, the, the largest concentration of Christians in the world is China. And mm -hmm. it's, it is a place where it's illegal to be a Christian. Yep. And here's what's amazing. Ask anybody, tell me one pastor in the underground church. Tell me the name of one of the churches. Oh, you don't you know can't. me. You don't know we'll, anybody. We'll know them when we get to heaven. We'll know them when we get <laughs> yeah. to heaven. But if you ask them in the West, yeah. tell me the best churches, the be the most popular, pa we can name them hands down, probably 20 just immediately. And I believe, Carter, what is going to happen in this next season, though, it, though it's going to go from hate speech um, removing off of social platform, social media platforms, to removing of of our 501c3s and nonprofit status, and then it's going to come to fines. And I think they'll chain the doors of the church, but God will have His church meeting in homes around the world. What I believe at that point is God now, through this pandemic and what's coming, is repoing His church. He's taking it back. Yeah, yeah. It's as one of my friends used yep. to say this. He says, "What revival basically is." is when God gets sick and tired of being misrepresented, he comes back himself. <laughs> I fully believe that. <laughs> That's what I think Stay is going to happen. Stay low. I've told Stay me. low. Stay low when that starts happening. And I believe in the next season, I, I don't think, it, it, and God used Carter Conlon. God used David Wilkerson. I truly believe this. I, my name will not be attached to that church. It'll just be God's church. It'll be Times Square Church. I, I don't think this next wave has any personality attached to it. One personality, and but he's three persons. Praise God, God the Father, God the Son, Praise and God. God the Holy Spirit. And, you know, Tim, it's, it's just such a pleasure. And I think we're going to be able to, you know, hopefully in sometime in the future, I know that there's some churches and pastors that are interested in how we have done this transition and continue to do it, how how we have chosen to honor one another and to love one another and to and to be real. You know, what I love about you is that I can we can have honest conversations. We've had to have a few. That's right. In the last year or two. That's right. But we always work it through. We have an honest conversation, but we're on the same team, going in the same direction, and uh, and and we always come to this conclusion. I want to just close with this today, Psalm 133, when it says, David says, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, and running down to the edge of his garments. In other words, when we choose to walk in unity, there is an, an anointing that comes from God. I mean, there's, there's no other way you can describe it. It's God's choice, his anointing. It, it's, it, and it's like a, I like the, uh, David's uh, description is like the totality of the anointing, yes. not just from the head, but all the way down to the bottom. The and it down. speaks of like, when, if we choose to walk together in unity, there's a blessing that comes upon the people, not Amen. just us. It goes right from the head, right down to the skirts of his garment. It's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. It's, there's something in unity that satisfies the thirst of the land, right? This land, is, this land is thirsty, thirsty. And they don't need any, they don't need any more personalities. This land needs people who are walking together mm -hmm. in Christ. And it says, for there, the Lord commanded the blessing, life evermore. And, and my, my prayer for you and I and for Times Square Church is that God through us could command the blessing of life everlasting. And in the church, in the city, in the nation, in the, in the home fellowships throughout the world, we're, we're, it's really up to him as to where he wants to take this, right? And, and wherever he chooses to take it, may there be, may, may he be able to command this blessing of life. And so maybe we could close with that if, if I could ask you to pray for this blessing of life to be a, on our friendship, to be on our leadership, to be on the people of Times Square Church, that, that there would be an understanding maybe in people's hearts that this is the hand of God. Amen. This is not, this was never a men's idea. I mean, it, as much as, as you weren't even born when your father stood there and said, let the man speak, you, you were in the mind of God. Times Square Church was in the mind of mm -hmm. God. Like the, the transition was in the mind of God and the home fellowships were in the mind of God. Everything was in the mind of God. We're, this has not ever been orchestrated by any, anybody. That's right. Uh, and I, I just love that. Uh, like there has never been a roundtable board meeting where we say, what are we going to do now? You know, we've, we've just prayed. And as we've prayed that the spirit of God has led us, which brings you here. And so my heart is, that walking in unity with Christ first, uh, obviously, and with each other, because you can't have one without the other. Right. I don't think you can have one without the other. 
that he could command the blessing of life. So if you could pray that like throughout the world, in China and in India and in Asia and all over the world, that God would command this blessing of life everywhere that Times Square Church reaches through the internet. Because in the last days, the gospel will be preached to all people. I believe And that. I do believe the internet is the Roman road yes. of our generation. So I believe that. please, if you would. It would be my joy to pray, Pastor Carter. Yeah, okay. So as we begin to pray, I want us to think about those words as we begin to declare today how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. God, you are going to unify Jesus. your church, not just there in New York City, but around the world. I thank you, God. It is good and it is pleasant. It's right. It's the right thing. And Lord, where there are churches that there are divisions, that there are infighting, when they're fighting over who's the next pastor or fighting who's the next deacon or elder, God, would you begin to bring peace back to your church? Thank Repo you, your church today. Thank you, Lord. May you be the one that is, that is the outstanding character and personality. May they see your character more than any other person's character. God, I believe unity starts there, is pleasing the heart of God. If we know that it's good and pleasant in your sight for brethren to dwell to, in unity, then Lord, let that be thank our pursuit. You. Thank you. And I thank, thank you, God, God. That has been Thank the pursuit you. of Times Square Church. And, and, and there has been enemies and foxes um, that have tried to come in and disrupt that, Lord God. It's, it's come from every angle, from outside and inside. But I thank you that when you have a church that pursues what's good and pleasant in your eyes, you will bring down those enemies. So God, for yes, your church Jesus. in India, your church in London, and all over Europe, your church in the Ukraine, Hallelujah. down in Colombia and Peru, Lord God, your Thank church you, Lord. around America, Lord God, where unity is lacking, I pray that you would allow them to, to look up back to God and say, God, you need to be the one dominating force and character in this church. And I pray, let that precious oil start from Hallelujah. the head Head, Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. now run down the, you, the, the beard as it did the beard of Aaron and begin to go through the garments, God. I believe that, Lord, that, Lord, it is going to begin to take place for the Lord will command that blessing of life forevermore upon those churches. Send life back to your church, the dying church, where the heart rate is beginning to go God, down and, and, you, and it's barely there. You said from verse 1, when there's unity, all the way down to verse 3, you will command life evermore. You yes. will command that. So, yes, Lord, send Jesus. life back to your church. Send unity back to your church. Thank I'm you, so God. thankful for our overseer, Pastor Carter. I'm so thankful, God, for this new season that we have a chance to have dreams and visions work together. Sons and daughters are getting ready to prophesy in this last day's Thank church. You, God. I pray that we would walk as men that are an example, not only to our children and grandchildren, but to generations to come, to churches that have yet transitioned, that have yet known what it is to see this kind of unity. And may we be an example. I ask you, Lord God, because we know the enemy will try to come and disrupt disunity here. But Lord, we are not ignorant of Jesus, the enemy's devices Jesus, or the Jesus, enemy's schemes. Us, so Lord God, I'm so grateful for Pastor Carter, his love to please God. Lord, I want that same that same love. And then Lord, when you have two men, when you have a church that wants to please God, then Father, unity will be there. Thank you. So Lord. we pray for that Thank mighty you, anointing Thank over you, your church, over your people in the last days. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I have just so enjoyed just having this time to talk together. And, uh, let's do this again. Soon. We have to do it again. God bless you. God bless.